and you'll see in lane one, right on the inside there with those bright yellow spikes, Sharika Nelvis. Sharika Nelvis is two-time U.S. indoor champion. She was fifth at the last Olympic trials, but she has made world championship teams in the past, including in 2015. Arkansas State All-American. So Nelvis in one, Kenny Harrison in two, Dawn Harper Nelson in four. First of the women's 100 metres, and Kenny Harrison in lane two gets off to a beautiful start. Nelvis is trying to go with her. Kenny Harrison clearly has this field covered, and what a wonderful heat win for Kenny Harrison, the world record holder, 12 5 0. That's a good opening time for the world record holder. And you see the separation that she put between herself and the rest of this field. When you come back to a place, Lee, where you have previously failed, you want to make sure that every single round is perfection. And Kenny Harrison looked just about perfect from out here in lane two. She had some company from Nelvis early, but through the middle of the race, she is just so fast in between the hurdles and getting that lead back leg snapped back down to the track. That propels you forward. And that puts distance between you and the rest of this field. Kenny this said she used the pandemic to good use but by working not on her hurdling, on her sprinting. And all the women in this event yeah. have to be good sprinters as well. Thank Kenny you. is an above average sprinter and she's on to the next round. R right on the line, you may have noticed that Grace Stark snuck in there to edge Sharika Nelvis, but the top through, top three, excuse me, go through to the semifinals. It's time to say hello to Lewis Johnson. Lewis is with Kenny. Hello, Lee, to the Roars here in Hayward Field. Kenny, a great start for you. When you arrived at Hayward Field today, what were you thinking about before this first run? You know, come out here and do what I always do. Um, run, compete, and do the best I can. And you did that. And so with this win, the sharp time, how does this set you up for the net, for the semifinal? It sets me up really well. You know, my rhythm's there, my speed's there. Um, Got to clean my technique up at the end. But I'm just really looking forward to the next opportunity. All righty. Congrats on a great start. Thank you. All righty. Paul Swangard, over to you. Thanks very much, Lewis, of coverage. Let's keep it going in the women's 100-meter hurdles in lane four. Christina Clemens. Such great indoor credentials. She's trying to get the medal her husband, Kyle Clemens, has Olympic gold by making her first team. She has made world championship teams. You see that graphic there, fifth at the 2017 world championships in this event. Tarika Robinson right in the center there uh, alongside Christina Clemens in lane five, and it is a full field for this second heat of the women's 100 meter hurdles in lane three here is queen clay and she made the team in the 400 meter hurdles she was the youngest member of the team in 2008 and then in rio that's the olympics she will never forget <laughs> her now husband proposed to her after winning the silver in the triple jump she of course said yes there's the picture to prove it what great memories. And Will is competing here at the trials as well. And Will has been very forward about saying, I will stop in the middle of my competition to watch my wife compete if that is the case. Well, your wife is about to compete right now, Will. Second heat of the women's 100 meter hurdles. So she'll start in lane three next to Christina Clemens. Only three women have run faster than Clemens in this event in 2021 among Americans. So she will be the favorite here. She's in lane four. Top three advance to the semis and then the next best uh, four fastest times. Clay has a season's best that indicates that she will have to set another one if she's going to be an automatic qualifier out of this heat. On the right of this race, there are quite a few women that have run very fast this year. Queen Clay in that bright pink top. Christina Clements alongside Clements, clearly out fast. Robinson alongside her running well. Out wide, Talia Brooks is doing also well also. She's pushing Brooks to the line. It's close between Christina Clements and Talia Brooks. Not quite as fast as we saw Kenny Harrison run. 
but I think Queen Clay did get the season's best that she's going to need to advance. Talia Brooks is your winner. But what did Queen run? I think they're taking a little extra time to look at that. At her. And that usually means that there's a lean for third, because remember, only the top three are automatically qualified through to the semifinal round. So it is Queen Clay that gets the third automatic spot. Here's Talia Brooks. She was in lane seven. Clemens got out well, three lanes to her left, but those two led everyone else over those last four hurdles. And Brooks actually had a nice close to get to the line first. Boy, that was so close. Two one thousandths of a second is what got Queen Clay that automatic qualification. Look, right there. And here's the reaction from Queen when she finally finds out, I made it, I'm going through to the semis. And remember I said, this is why they were taking so long to decide who was in third. They had to look at the photo finish to decide that Queen Clay was the one Olympian in this field, Addo, and it's Christy Castlin. She starts in lane seven. The United States created history by sweeping this event at the 2016 Rio Olympic Games, and this was the young lady that got the bronze medal. In fact, she had to pass somebody for that third spot within the last 10 meters. But she has not been having that kind of a year this year, so she will have to summon something from yesteryear to get out of this first round heat. A couple of lanes inside her is Amber Hughes in lane five. She is determined to try and make the team. It is going to be tough because, as you know, the landscape in U.S. women's hurdling is tough. It is stacked. And if the talent runs deep. Case in point, Anna Cockrell in lane four. We just showed Queen Clay. Well, Anna Cockrell just emulated Queen Clay by winning the 100 hurdles and the 400 hurdles at the NCAA championships. Only two women have run faster at this meet than Anna Cockrell. She just turned pro this week. The 23-year-old from Charlotte, North Carolina. There is Peyton Chadwick. She is in the middle. Uh, she's right there in lane six inside Christy Caslin alongside Amber Hughes. Remember, so, top three is the magic number. And as we did yesterday, we'll be paying close attention to some of these collegians, especially the ones that have run multiple events. That meet was last weekend. So some of them may be feeling the fatigue from having run all of those rounds just one week ago. See hip number three there, that's Destiny Heuvin. She is the 2021 Big Ten champion in the 100 hurdles. So talent everywhere, whether experienced or young collegiates. Cockrell is good enough to be able to make the Olympic team in both of these events. That would be unprecedented. Third heat of the women's 100 hurdles, who got out to a great start. Aaliyah Armstrong in lane eight most certainly did. Now here comes Anna Cockrell. She's being pushed though on the inside by Jones. And so who Cuban. Wow. Three vying for the win. No worries about those three going through. That was close. Think about the ease with which we saw Kenny Harrison get to the line. These women were running as though this was the final. Leaning, straining, survive in advance, right? Yeah. Your job is to be in the top three. Otherwise, nothing else matters. So there's Chadwick on the right, Cockrell on the left. Cockrell has been given the decision 1263 for the win. Chadwick is also safely through with 1266 in third. And Jones second at 1264. Christy Caslin, 1288. So here's a look at the NCAA double champion, Cockrell. Look at the lead that Aaliyah Armstrong had on the, on the left. But now Cockrell gets into her running. And she had a really good final five hurdles. That got her to the line in first. And she is safely through to the semifinal round. Christy Caslin will have to rely on her time 
Uh, she came across the line in the top five, as the results will tell you. But it's Cockrell, Jones and Chadwick going through to the semi-finals. Remember, it's the next four fastest times that will help you try and get through to the semi-finals. There's just one heat to come. Here's Paul Swangard with a field events update. Paul? Thanks very much, Lee. We'll turn our attention to the Marshall. No American has run faster this year. But there are some injury concerns after she tweaked her hamstring last weekend in the 4 by one and did not run this event at the NCAA Championships. Gabby Cunningham will be in lane seven. She is coached by Alan Johnson, the multiple-time world champion and the 1996 Olympic champion at 110 hurdles. And Gabby won the indoor championship last year in the 60-meter hurdles. The Olympic champion in lane one, fastest American in lane five, Tania Marshall. McNeil all the way on the inside in blue and green, gets off to a tremendous start. Oh, there is a hurdler down. I think that may have been Jasmine Jones. Meanwhile, Brianna McNeil wins her heat and quite comfortably so in a time of 12.51. Not the fastest heat we've seen here this evening in Haywood Field. But Brianna McNeil has done everything she needs to do. That was an amazing opening heat. I think equally good as Kenny Harrison, but you see the disappointment on the face of Jones. She clobbered a hurdle and did not survive her opening round heat. So Cunningham is safely through. She got second. We know McNeil was first across the line. And Tania Marshall, the fastest American this year, hung on for third. Desmond Jones being helped to the infield. This is what happened to her. Look to the left. So McNeil is in one. And Jones is in six. But wow, she took a hard tumble. And some of the worst falls we see in the sport, Lee, are in this event. She, stum she stumbled. If you look closely, she stumbled before she got to the hurdle. Watch. That's the first one. This is where she stumbles here. Oh, man. And listen, this happens to them all. It happens to 100-meter hurdlers in practice. It happens in meets. We saw the Drake relays where Kenny Harrison, yeah. the world record holder, had a similar situation at hurdle one. So tough break there for Jasmine Jones the USC freshman. She'll be back. She's young. Just 19 years of age, but the Olympic champion survives and advances. As we mentioned, did what she needed to do as Jasmine Jones is assisted from the track. Unfortunately, she doesn't feature where she would like to in the results of this fourth and final heat.